Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a situation that no one ever expects to face. How do you tell your husband that his mother, who's been a source of insecurity for him, went behind his back and photoshopped his face in your wedding pictures? But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. My mother-in-law photoshopped my husband's nose on our wedding pictures. I, 27-year-old female, have been with my husband, 29-year-old male, for seven years. I remember that early in our relationship, one of the first things he expressed insecurity about was his nose, specifically about its width. He never wanted surgery but thinks his nose is too big for his face. I never thought that true, and for a long time I wondered where he'd gotten that idea from. Then I met his mother, and all my doubts went out the window. I don't hate her, but the woman complains about everything, and she seems particularly interested in criticizing her sons. Barely anything about my husband or his older brother is good enough for her, and if it is, she's quick to imply they don't deserve it. According to my brother-in-law, that behavior didn't start until father-in-law passed about eight years ago, so they don't usually hold it against her. But to me, it seems like she legitimately doesn't want her children to be happy. Most times we talk to her, my husband ends up devastated. She constantly complains about me, his job, our apartment, and his appearance. She has on more than one occasion suggested he get a nose job. That tends to upset him, so I always try to shut that down as quickly as possible. We got married in early May. The photos were ready about two months later, and we created a shared album on Google Photos for our friends and family, including mother-in-law. I got pregnant during our honeymoon, can't recommend Dubrovnik enough, and I'm now 24 weeks along. We've had problems with mother-in-law concerning my pregnancy. We're having a boy, and she had a breakdown because she wanted a girl. That forced us to put her on an info diet. That was two months ago, and she since improved her behavior. Because of that, we said yes when she invited us to go to a mall near her place to shop for baby clothes last Saturday. My husband had an emergency at work and ended up not coming, but we still managed to have a good time. When we were done, she invited me back to her place. I hadn't been there in a while, and I quickly saw that she'd gotten some of our wedding pictures up on the wall. I instantly noticed something was wrong with them, but I couldn't pinpoint what it was yet. Mother-in-law saw what I was looking at and proudly announced that she'd gotten someone to fix his nose. In other words, she gave her son a Photoshop nose job on his wedding pictures. I couldn't believe it. I never thought she'd stoop so low. It wasn't even a good nose job. It was so bad that my husband's face didn't look real. He looked like a Ken doll, and not in the hot Ryan Gosling way. Mother-in-law must have seen how mad I got because she instantly tried to defend herself. She tried to make the point that her son deserved to look his best on his wedding day, and I should have convinced him to get the real nose job before our ceremony. I made up an excuse to leave, but I could tell she knew the real reason. She's been calling and texting me almost every day since. I've been ignoring her, but she's always either apologizing, accusing me of overreacting, or begging me not to tell my husband. I know it seems trivial, but I'm outraged, and the more I think about it, the more disgusted I get. I could never imagine doing something like that to my child. I haven't told my husband yet, mostly because we've both been busy with work this week, but also because I have no idea how to. His mother was finally starting to be a better person around him and his brother, and I know it'll break his heart to find out about this. I don't know what to do. I have to tell him, but I can't figure out how. I know he loves his mother, and I don't want to damage whatever relationship they still have. Mother-in-law also mentioned she intended to send the improved pictures to some of her relatives, so I have to find a way to shut that down. So how can I tell my husband his mother photoshopped his face on our wedding pictures? More importantly, what would be the most peaceful way to do it? What's she going to do if your baby gets his nose? Berate the child and photoshop pics of him or her until she croaks? Yikes, she sounds like a delight. And our second story. $300? I thought you were only going to charge like 30 I'm a music producer in my free time. It's what I've done since 2010. Nothing else quite brings me the same joy. After a while, I begin to bore myself of my own style and want to branch out. Maybe it's time I try producing for other people. I want to really commit and help someone else find their sound. 
I knew it'd be hard finding someone who can appreciate my value of my work. Most of my previous inquiries I was given were shocked that I charged to let others use my equipment at all. I need to make money back on my equipment somehow, right? I mean, my current setup is over the $6,000 mark. Multiple instruments and countless sound libraries, virtual instruments, and synths get pricey. I start to spread the word about this through my personal social media. I get a few requests I have to deny as they're upfront about not wanting to pay. And one request for a quote from an old high school friend. The guy runs a gaming YouTube channel and says he needs a full score done for a Halo-like film project. The subject matter surprised me as he previously tried to get me to collaborate with his insane clown posse-like persona. I figured he'd be messaging out that again. Here's the criteria he listed out for me. 30 minutes in length, real string instruments, no VST, basically a virtual instrument, epic vocal choirs, bombastic drums, but only real percussion. He also wanted an intense cinematic dubstep section near the end. Now, all these things are possible for me to accomplish. They're just simply going to end up costing me money to get it done. I figured maybe I'd eat the cost and do my friend a favor so the quality isn't sacrificed. Me. Hey, man, I'm just going to send over a quote tomorrow, okay? This is going to be an exceptional piece based on your criteria. I'll need to have things in order to make sure this pans out well. Him. Works for me. Just let me know. This is time sensitive. I'd need to rent out the time of string players I knew from high school, rent percussive instruments from a store down the road from me, and my own voice could cover the choir, perhaps include the string players in on it as an added bonus and more vocal colors. Of course, my time outside of work would be dominated for this. My total ended up coming to roughly $600 for everyone included. The percussive instruments would be $400 to rent, and the godsend violin player near me I could actually find agreed to meet for a couple hours for $200. After only a day of searching, I let him know the total of everything and said I'd take half the cost just so I can help him achieve a solid sonic experience within his film and something great under my portfolio, thinking it's a shoe in and win-win. Cue the surprise Pikachu.ping. Me, after all costs considered, it'll be $600 flat. I won't charge for labor, and I'll actually cover half the cost of rental for percussive instruments and the use of mutual string player friends' time, meaning you'll only need to pay $300 for this. Should be a fun project. Let me know your thoughts. Yeah. What? $300? Dude, I was only expecting to spend like $20 at most and maybe give you an extra 10 for the labor. Me. My apologies, but I charge more than 20 bucks just for someone to come in and use my studio with everything in-house by the hour. I can't accomplish what you're asking for with the given budget. Him, I thought you were just going to do me a favor. I've been in your studio before. This sort of thing would take you an hour or two tops. Me, I guess I could just produce the strings and percussion myself. It'll be more cost effective, but take more time to achieve the correct sound you may be going for meaning I'll have to possibly do revisions, more work, etc. Him. Dude, I need this to be real. I can't use fake sounds. Could $40 cover it? Me. No, I'm sorry. Definitely bothered me a bit when afterward they updated their statuses about fake butts just trying to make a quick buck right after I rejected his last plea. But then I remembered we're both adults now and chalked this situation up to him being possibly ignorant of how much work goes into making music. I honestly think people like this don't understand the concept of money and how it works. And our next story. A customer had her purse stolen and was mad that we didn't prevent it. This happened back when I was an assistant retail supervisor at a thrift store. Every morning we'd have a whole mob of people waiting outside the door to get in because they wanted to be the first to get their hands on whatever new thing that was put out. One woman in particular came in about five days a week, generally two to three times a day, coinciding for when the production crew rolled out their carts with new items. She, along with many, many others, was a reseller. She was an issue just about every day and was very close to becoming banned, but always managed to just toe the line because, as it turns out, there was a worker there that would warn her as soon as she got to one more time and she's gone, she also didn't like me because she liked to rip or cut the tags off of items and would lie about prices for similar items, and I wouldn't let her get away with it. So one day she comes in and gets her purchases and leaves. She takes her cart out and leaves it outside in the parking lot, as you do, and later comes back to find that the purse she's left in the cart outside the store is now gone. 
First, she accuses us of stealing it, but we've got nice cameras and police are called and evidence is handled over. Her purse is found and returned. You'd think that'd be the end of it, no? No. For the next several weeks, she continues to come in as normal. But this time, she's telling every customer within earshot that we allowed her purse to get stolen and we didn't do our due diligence, that she was getting a lawyer and was intending to sue us, etc., etc. Unfortunately, management said that if we banned her now, it would look like retaliation. Then the regional director got involved and something about her threatening a lawsuit meant something or another, and if she continued speaking to other customers about it, we could finally give her the boot. Well, of course, her little friend got into her ear and she finally shut up about it, so once again, we were unable to ban her. Cherry on top, she was so mad about us not doing anything to stop it, but when the police found the guy, he had a gun on him. We ain't dying for your purse, lady. Replacing everything in that purse is a lot cheaper than a trip to the emergency room for a gunshot and the lingering effects which might last the rest of your life. And our last story. Unauthorized berm and gravel on my property leads to legal confrontation. I live in Washington state where the heavy rain can be quite the issue, especially when water runs downhill. My property is situated uphill from my neighbors, which means water naturally flows onto their yard. When my neighbor's property was bought by a developer a couple of years ago, a new house and landscaping were put in. At first, everything seemed fine. But when the rain started, my neighbor complained about water runoff damaging their new landscaping. A few months ago, my neighbor approached me saying that the water runoff from my property was causing problems. I explained that water had always run downhill and that the real issue was that the builder had illegally covered up a city drain in front of their property. I suggested they contact the builder to fix the problem as it was not something I could resolve on my own. Instead of contacting the builder, my neighbor took a different approach. A crew arrived to build a berm on the city easement to block the water from entering their property. When they began extending the berm onto my property, I intervened. I told the workers they did not have permission to work on my land and made sure they didn't touch anything beyond the easement. Despite this, the situation continued to escalate. Weeks later, my neighbor started placing sandbags on my property to prevent flooding. I informed them that they couldn't modify my property without my consent and help them move the sandbags back to their side. I urged them once again to address the drain issues with the builder. Then, one day after work, I came home to find that the contractor had covered a section of my property with gravel and a sloped dirt hill. They had extended the berm even further into my land, making it clear they were working without permission. Fuming and feeling that my property rights were being trampled, I wanted to confront my neighbor but needed to understand my legal options first. I sought advice to ensure I could protect my property while aiming for a peaceful resolution. That evening, I spoke with my neighbor. To my surprise, they revealed that the contractor had acted without their authorization as well. They'd only asked the contractor to uncover the city drain and restore their yard, not to make changes to my property. My neighbor was as frustrated as I was about the unauthorized work. My neighbor agreed to confront the contractor and demand that they undo the unauthorized work on my property. We also agreed to jointly contact the builder to address the illegal covering of the city drain, as this was the root cause of the problem. After some back and forth, the contractor agreed to remove the gravel and restore my property to its original state. They also dismantled the extended berm, clearing the encroachment from my land. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.